Okay, there we go. Um, so I, I originally called this uh, partly because we, um, it seemed like there was not very many topics on the board to discuss. Um, this is a topic that I've been interested in and involved in teaching for uh, four years or so. And I'm just acutely aware that there are many visual regression testing tools out there. There's many options for people to do things like this. And I'm not sure if Backstop JS is still the hot new thing. I, I, I don't know if it's still super actively the thing that people pick uh, for, for problems like this. And so I wanted to just, I guess, propose the topic, but then probably sit back and listen to see what things other people are talking about in the space and interested in hearing more about. So that's why I'm here as an introduction. Uh, would someone else like to jump in? Well, well, I wanted to come because I don't actively, I, I am a QA engineer in my job role with Canopy, but I've been sort of taken off of that role recently because I work more in the community and we're focusing on that because of just right now, that's all the events are happening. But um, one of the things about the QA engineer role at my shop is we try to allow it as a role, like a, like a transitional role for folks like who don't have that coding web development within our internal agency but are looking to move in and so we sort of thought that the QA role was a really good role for them to be able to introduce themselves to the back end and um, learn how Drupal works and things like that because they're looking at architecture maps they're doing visual regression testing but one of the things that we use almost exclusively because we do have like the junior coders or the people who aren't coders one of the the tool that we use is backstop JS because it's so straightforward, the documentation, all the knowledge base information is so easy to understand that anyone can kind of jump in and create a backstop JS file. And with the help of like maybe a developer integrate that circle CI. So I was coming in to see what other tools people are using that are that straightforward. So internally within Canopy, we are using backstop JS on all of our projects. We integrate them with the Pantheon workflow. We have multi-dev set up. It's just because of the ease of use, you know, really, it's just one file and you're comparing URLs and you scrub. So um, that's why I'm here. Yeah, um, I'm at the AMA and we use um, a few different, we started with Cybers um, for our testing and then I believe we switched over to Nightwatch because uh, Aquia can't run Cypress in their environment for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, we've, we've used um, Nightwatch recently, and then we also have used, what was the other one? I forget, it escapes me, but Cypress and Nightwatch have been our uh, two most popular that we've worked with. And then we use, you know, Percy for taking snapshots and whatnot. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to add in notes as we're talking. Uh, so definitely review, update, edit things that I'm getting wrong or are incomplete if you see anything. But thank you for sharing that. That's It's always good to get some new perspectives, some new options. Welcome, Kim. Hi, thank you. Sorry I'm late. I had to type up some notes from the last session. That's okay. So we're just giving introductions, really just like sharing uh, what we were hoping to learn about here and maybe something that we've done in the past, what tools we're using right now, if, if anything, for uh, visual regression testing or other, other tests. Um, Michael um, mentioned Percy. That's something that I've used. Um, and really, to be honest, that's about it. Um, that's why I'm here, because I really need to figure out a way to do that for my current projects. I just started at my current job last September and we don't necessarily have something um, in, uh, integrated into any of our workflows yet. So that's something I'm trying to get done, um, but I'm wanting something quick and easy, but I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, interesting. Percy is one that I've never heard of before. I'm looking at their website right now. 
Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, it does get costly, but I saw like we basically saw them do a demo a couple of years ago in JSConf and yeah, I mean, it's very straightforward. I, I don't even think you need extensive development experience to actually use the interface, but, and I'm sure Michael can probably say uh, more than me, but um, it basically will just do um, screenshots of um, a set limit of pages that you wanna um, QA and it will do a side-by-side -side comparison. I don't actually know what's going on in the, you know, behind, um, you know, um, internally, but I do know that they will do like an actual, they can present like a side-by-side -side comparison of a before and after you push, um, push into a branch or create a new commit. Cool. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, the downside is that it's, um, I think after 30 snapshots, um, they start charging you, so. I, I went to the website too, and I saw that they're part of the browser stacks. Is that, is, is it within the testing tool or just that they're bought by them? Does anyone know that? I can't tell by. Um, last time I used it, it was, we had integrated it into, um, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it wasn't through browser stack. It was through our workflow. Um, and I think Jenkins was involved. Um, so yeah, it wasn't through browser stack though. I can say that much. Yeah, it looks like they were just acquired, but I, I haven't okay. logged in to, to see. That's what that's what it seems to me. And I just wanted to clarify maybe if we knew. Because we use browser stacks, but there's, from what I can tell, no visual regression testing involved in that at all, you know, so. Yeah, it, it looks like from their blog post, they're saying that sometime in the future, there might be integrations between the two, but right now nothing is changing. You know, Nightwatch is one that I haven't really heard too much about either, despite uh, Amy June, you were asking on Slack somewhat recently, if we had folks at Pantheon that were sort of on top of Nightwatch, but uh, and I saw that there were sessions yesterday, I think, on yeah, we, kind of getting um, started. Someone, I don't know if it was you or who else did it, suggested Matt Glayman. And because I searched the internet for it forever and I didn't see any sessions at any Drupal camps or word camps or anything. And so, yeah, he did like two sessions, one like how to get you, how to get it working locally. And then the after lunch was specifically how to get it working with Olivero so they could sprint on it on, um, uh, Saturday and I didn't get to go to any of those sessions because you know organizing stuff happens and you just <laughs> you have yeah a well do you do you know if those were recorded they were recorded I don't know okay. if they'll be listed but I can let you know that but they were recorded and we're going to ask Matt to um, do a kind of training on Nightwatch at Drupal Camp Asheville I don't know if that will be of interest to him. But now that he's sort of given that live demo and got a feel for it, you know, if he's interested in, in doing it again more formally, um, that would be really spectacular. Um, well, just to potentially spur on more discussion, just to point out a difference, like with my experience with Backstop.js and what I see with like Percy, um, and Backstop.js is something that you install locally on your computer you know, it's, I think, an open source project. You just run it and it does its stuff. Uh, whereas Percy and several other options that I've seen online uh, allow you to do like a uh, like software as a service. You know, it's all built in. You get a shiny interface for picking and choosing, you know, what to test and under what conditions and all that stuff. Um, but you, you end up paying for that. 
And Again, not the... to say that one is any better than the other, just pointing mm -hmm. out a difference to try to spur on a discussion. What are the price points or tiers for backstop? It's free. You, okay. it's, it's just oh, free okay. software you can install on your computer. But you have to use the command line and you know do a, just a tiny bit of coding to get in and start configuring it. OK. But minimal coding, like a couple of line changes and well, that I guess that's um, that might be different for different people. It's about perspective, so I I should take back that right minimal. So okay, good to know. And uh, on the internet, uh, David has some really nice blog articles and links to some videos um, that are really straightforward and easy to follow and. Um, and it only takes like a couple hours to really get started with it and to kind of explore it and just click a button if you want to like just mess around with something one day it's really straightforward documentation so okay cool um yeah the link to that is in the docs uh, or the the yeah. shared document that we're working in um that's the one um that the one your website to your personal site yeah i i embedded okay. the video cool. from the last time i gave that presentation nice okay good to know oh i see it now yeah it looks like backstop has uh workshops available on udemy now too okay yeah that sounds that's really helpful. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, there's lots of tools out there that you could do yourself and set up locally and, mm -hmm. you know, go through and, and put all the effort into learning it and doing it and, and stuff. And then there's the turnkey solutions where you pay a little bit, but all of that is hopefully easier, kind of obscured, so you can just focus on what you're trying to do. So I think there are pros and cons to either way. Right. depending on who exactly is going to be using it. Yeah, I like that it's completely free because, yeah, I mean, it's not really something that's of top priority. So it's one of those things where if it's just something we can try to do when we have time or we can carve, up, carve out space for it, yeah, that would be really useful. We, we use it every single time we do a um, update, a, you know, a Drupal update, security update or module update, um, mm -hmm. because of the ease of use and just adding URLs down the line, you know, we just make sure that we do a content freeze and then, okay. um, and then clone the databases down, you know, so the databases are the same on the whatever, because you're comparing two instances and we compare like a whatever uh, branch that we do the updates on to the to the production site and we just um, yeah freeze content for about an hour and then we get a you know a, a little bit of a report and it's it's pretty nice you know and on some of the bigger projects they have it running on circle ci too which is a little bit out of my wheelhouse mm -hmm. of knowledge to share but um it's totally doable and so a lot of them they'll they'll add their changes like when they're just doing like feature requests with feature requests and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it'll kick back that it didn't pass the test, you know, so they know that they have to start again. So um, some of it eliminates that that human um, involvement at the development level, which sometimes we can't afford, not price wise, but um, uh, staff wise, you know, sometimes you can't, uh, so you don't, you have to get it done in a hurry and you don't have someone to do your, do your review for you, so. Right. Michael, I see you asked a question in the, the chat. I, I don't know what you mean by non-headless mode. Well, we're like um, Cypress, uh, if you run some tests in Cypress, you can turn uh, headless mode off where it will actually run, uh, open up a Chrome browser for you and run your test for you, but it will show it visually so you can see the web page loading in it kind of gives developers an easier way to debug their end-to-end -end tests um, 
And I, I, I like that about Cypress the most. So I was just curious if Backstop had that built in. He, I, I want to say yes. I, there are definitely ways within uh, Backstop to select the browser you want to use, like virtual or I think actually you know, picking one of your existing browsers. Um, I think the default is that it will pick a, um, a virtual browser like Chromium or something like that. And so it'll all run under the hood and you don't see anything pop up. But I think there is a setting to make something actually show on the screen to debug as you're going, but I, that's not something I've done before. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, being an unconference session, um, this is done when it's done and it starts when it starts and we should feel free to get up and move around if there's nothing more to talk about here. That's totally okay. I just wanna make that space available and deliberate about that. Um, I'm happy to stick around and keep talking about stuff, but if there's nothing more to uh, to ask or other related topics to bring up, then you know we can feel free to go to another session or take a break for a little bit. Thank you, David. That sounds good. Thanks, David. That's really helpful. I mean, I'm, I've learned a lot from the short time, so I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks, David, for putting it on the schedule. No problem. Thanks for coming and contributing.